Good afternoon, guys. Uh, Victor Mangena here from PIPS Exclusive. Um, we were supposed to have the webinar last night, but uh, we had issues with uh, internet connection. So I thought I'll just do a video and send it to you guys. So today we're going to look at a few charts and uh, just do a basic uh, market analysis. Uh, it's basically just an overview of the, the charts for the week ahead that we're going to look at. Um, my strategy, as you all know by now, I use the Elliott Wave Theory. And um, I think uh, just to get started, we're going to just do a uh, recap of what we did in the last webinar. It will actually be beneficial if you can just uh, go through uh, the last week's webinar. That was the webinar on the 23rd of July and uh, see what we discussed regarding the patterns. So last week we discussed four types of patterns. Uh, the one pattern that we discussed was the zigzag, uh, which is the which is the basic Elliott wave correction, and we discussed also the flat corrections. There are three types of flat corrections. So in total, we discussed four 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 types of uh, corrections or patterns. So it's important uh, to understand these patterns so that we can always look for them in the charts when we do our market analysis. Because once you know what the patterns behave like. Uh, it's easy to spot them on the charts. So that's the most important thing, to learn and understand the behavior of the patterns and the personality of the patterns and uh, what uh, makes those patterns uh, behave the way they actually do. So once you have that basic understanding, then it's easy to spot these patterns when you do your analysis. Okay, so just a quick recap on what we discussed last week. Um, for the benefit of those that did not watch the webinar last week, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a quick recap. All right, so we discussed the three types of corrections. So the first one, uh, we rather use the yellow color. I think it is more visible. So you always have a swing, and then after the swing, you get a correction. So this is your normal zigzag correction. A, B, C, right, the next one, then now you become the flat. So as I said, you only start with a swing. So this one will be your flat correction. Right, and I'll explain which types of patterns they are. As you can see, I'm labeling them all A, B, C correction. Here you'll have your impulse swing or actionary swing, maybe a one, two, three, four, five, or double X, Y, whichever it can be, uh, it will be an impulse swing. All right, so this is number one. This is number, okay, I'll call this 2.1 because this is a flat. And then the next one, another flat correction, because I said there's three types of flats, right? So this one, then you still that's your tops. Just remember, these are your tops, these are your tops, these are your tops, A, B, See, and it will actually benefit you to actually go into the Elliott Wave Theory to learn the rules that govern these uh, corrections. And guys, uh, these, are, these are not the only patterns that you find in Elliott Wave. You've got the triangle corrections, you've got uh, the ending diagonal and the leading diagonal, all these patterns. These are the patterns that we look for when we do the uh, of what we do analysis or with, uh, using the edit wave theory. All right, so here I'm just looking at the zigzag and the flat corrections. So it will be the honest is on to you to go and study uh, the other corrections. So, right, so the zigzag, you can see one of the rules is that these two swings must be equal. And then here you're going to have three waves, and here you get five waves, right? So look, normally a zigzag pulls up two. Uh, about the 50% of this swing here, about 50%. Okay, so that's just one of the rules that helps us identify the types of type of correction that it is. Okay, all right, and then we get the first, the, 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 this, okay, this is going to be 2.2 .2 here, let's just mark it. Uh, and do, this will be 2.2, .2, this will be 2.3. So I'll just call this one. The first one is, you can see that, let's just look at what it does first of all. This is your top, 
the real B wave, the end of B wave does not break the top. Uh, the C wave just slightly break the end of A wave. So this one is called the regular. Okay, this is the regular flat. So the second correction, you can see that your B wave breaks the top of the swing, and then it also breaks considerably the end of uh, wave A, right? So this one is called the expanding flat, all right? And the third one is this one. You get a shin, you get an A correction, but your B still breaks the top, but here your C does not break the end of wave A. And this one is called A running. All right, so these are the three types of corrections. So you also get combinations of all these corrections. So you can get a you can get a, a zigzag in, in combination with the uh, with a, with a regular flat or in combination with the expanding flat or a running flat. So we always look for these things. So, so sometimes you will not only get this string and then the ABC and then the market can um, and then the market continues, right? So actually I expect the market to continue here. We actually expect the market to continue, the price to continue with the, with the string here. But in, today, in today's market, most of the time, it's not always the case. We always, you, you may get something like a combination, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw it, I'm not gonna draw it so cleanly here, but I'm just gonna show you what you could possibly find. You could find this as, a, as another zigzag, and then you find, and then you find um, maybe a another zigzag like this, and this thing can now be labeled a W, and I mean a W. And then now this W is representing this one, and then this one is going to be your X, which is representing this one, and then this is another zigzag, and then the Y, right? So you get this combination. So you can see here I've got a zigzag in combination with another zigzag. So it can be a combination of a of a the zigzag in combination with the regular flat, running flat, or the triangle, or anything like that. So we always look for these things, right? So it's important to understand this. All right, so now let's get to the charts. All right, there are a whole lot of other patterns that I did not cover here. I'm just covering these basic ones uh, so that we can understand when we do the analysis here. Uh, so let me, actually, I don't want to clear this. I just want to show you something else, again, that I discussed last week. So something that I discussed last week was that the reason why these are called the way they are called? They are called flat corrections. So you can see this one is a zigzag. It's not a flat, right? Basically, this correction is opposing the swing. The others are opposing the swing, but not as much as the zigzag. They're basically going sideways. Can you see they're going sideways? Sideways. So this is where the name flat comes from. This is where the name flat comes from. They are flat relative to the swing. Flat relative to the swing, right? So that's where the name flat comes from. So do not just accept anything without asking questions. You must ask yourself why they are called the way they are called. Okay. So now, also, there's also personalities of these strings that determine the type of correction that you're going to get. So what do I mean by that? Okay. So why I'm saying you must always ask questions is that why should this one behave like this one? Why should this one break the top? This one breaks the top, but does not break the end of wave A. This one breaks the top and breaks the end of wave A. When does that happen? So these are the questions that you must ask yourself. You must not just accept that there's a regular and they're expanding and they're running. You must ask yourself these questions. So, for example, the reason why you will get an expanding flat is when this wave, uh, this string has got a very, uh, has got a big momentum, right? So if the momentum is big, which means that the pullback here is possibly going to be pretty shallow. And then the momentum to the upside is still high. That's why you'll get this wave B breaking at the top. And then obviously when the, when the momentum uh, ends, you get this uh, swing coming down and breaking the, um, the end of wave A like that. So you must also look at the personalities of these swings. Right? How do they behave? So if you're looking at the swing, what, are you, what type of correction are you going to anticipate? So here, if the momentum is not so big, call it medium or something like that, um, you would possibly expect something to be sideways, right? But here, when the momentum is so strong, you expect this one to break the top and then break the bottom as well. So here you can see, I mean, what, what does this one tell us? It tells us that the momentum here was very, very strong to the upside, okay? It's very strong. Why? Look, 
you had this pullback, but the top was broken. The bottom was not even broken, okay? Because the moment upside momentum is still so strong. This is the cases where you will normally get a combination, maybe another X, and then you get another correction so that this thing can be corrected properly. Because the reason for a correction is to get uh, uh, is to is to is to get a lower buying price, especially for people that would have missed buying opportunities in the lower areas. So you can see some people would have bought here, and most of most of the market market participants would have missed this opportunity. So the reason for a correction is for the rest of the market participants to get an opportunity to go with the flow. Right? So here you would not have gotten enough. That's why you would normally get another combination so that this can take this all the way down. Okay to an area where others will be able to go in. Okay, so this is, this is what happens. So those who like to trade patterns will notice that here, on these corrections, you've got uh, here, what you would call a Gartley, uh, here, same thing again. So Elliott Wave is basically, for those who trade patterns, is basically, um, is basically a shortcut to the uh, Elliott Wave theory. So most people who don't really comprehend or understand the, uh, Elliott wave theory uh, mostly uh, switch to advanced patterns, but now there's no there's no difference between advanced pattern and the Elliott wave theory because it's all the same. You get a swing and a correction, but it's just that with Elliott theory wave theory, you get a detailed wave count, you know, specific entries and um, and exits. Okay, I hope that uh, introduction was uh, beneficial and you learned something from that. So now we're going to go into the charts. Remember all those patterns that we discussed. Now we actually go to the real charts to actually see what is going on here. So what I've got on my screen right now is the weekly chart of Euro US dollar, one of the most traded pairs on the market. Okay, so what are we seeing here? I'm gonna get my pen out again here and just uh, label what I see. This is what I always do. If you don't, if you're just starting out, you must always do this thing. Identify your strings, excuse me, identify your strings and identify your correction. So right here, I'm actually going to identify, I can see there's the string here, and then the correction starts. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna label the correction with a different color. Can you see that I've got this uh, string here? And from the corrections or the patterns that we've learned, you can already, you can tell me which one this is. Right, so this is the top of the string. Does this break the top of the string? No. Does it break, just breaks the end of A? Yes, it does. Okay, so this is a running flat. We've just discussed this. So, when you know what you're looking for, you'll be able to identify these patterns easily. So you've got your a nice writing running flat there. So now tell me which one this is. So this one is A. Uh, let's do it properly. This one is A. Zigzag, the first one that we discussed. And then we've got another zig, zag, and then it was there end of this correction, right? So basically I had, I have three corrections here, right? So uh, the first one I had was a, a running flat, okay? And then in between was the zigzag. And notice something, this running flat is in the opposite direction of the string, but this one is in the same direction as the string. So all these corrections that are in the opposite direction of the string, they are mostly wave X, okay? And I'll get to that just now. And then I've got the zigzag, which I represent like this, okay? So this is what I have. I've got my running flat, I've got my zigzag. I'm gonna label this W. What is this W labeling? This whole W is telling me this whole running flat is a W, and then this one here is an X, okay? I said all the way, all the corrections that are in the same direction as the string, for lack of a better word, for myself, I usually call these ones sub-corrections. So these are the corrections that are in between the main corrections. So my X is usually, I usually call it the sub-correction you know, for, 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 for ease of explanation. And then I get a, a Y. Do you see where these, all these WXYs come from? So now notice something here. Let's change the color to red now. Here, this can be labeled W. X, Y, in the lower degree, see the degree, you can label this one, W, X, Y. So it's not just a matter of doing all these zigzags, it's a matter of understanding the patterns 
and labeling them correctly. WXY in the lower degree, you see. And this is the weekly chart. And once you've got the, label, the, the weekly chart, the rest is just uh, filling in. It becomes much, much easier, okay? You can even go down lower. On this WX, can you see that there's something in between here? There's another zigzag. You can do this up, all the way up until infinity. And I'm sure here we've got something else as well, but we don't want to go that for ease for, in, 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 we don't want to complicate our charts. So you've seen what we've done there. So this is the chart of Euro US dollar. I'm going to look at this area, current market price, so that we can see how we trade this pair now. All right. So what are we looking at? I'm going to go to the daily chart so we can look at this area and identify the correction that we have here. Let's go to the daily. Uh, before I go to the daily, let's just show you the analysis there. What I've just marked for you here. I hope I can fit this whole webinar in under an hour. I'm not going to be discussing the theory after this. I'm just going to be going through the charts and applying the patterns that we've discussed. Okay. So this is what I was talking about. This is how now I've labeled them correct uh, properly, what I was talking about. So I have the swing and this main one, we've got the running flat there which is a W, and then a sub-correction, X, and then a zigzag in wave Y. See how easy it is when you understand what you do. So the problem is just labeling this without the understanding. So now we're going to go to the daily chart. And you see, because I'm a swing trader, I always try to get trades from the lowest, uh, uh, from the lowest point of the swing or to the extreme point of the swing. So now this is where we are. So this pair actually threw most of the traders off because most of the traders, we thought that this pair was making a, a triangle. In the of tri traders, we thought it was making a triangle. So we knew that this was not going to be a triangle because if it was a triangle, this was supposed to be an A, a B, C, a D, D here, and there. And then an E somewhere here, and then we go down, right? And then we expected that we will go down, and we will go up. There's a reason why we were expecting that, but it was not because it broke the rules of a triangle. Everything is all about rules and guidelines. Why do I say it broke the rules of a triangle? Because for, the, for this to be a valid triangle, this cannot break with D, cannot break with D, it's, it, then it's not a valid triangle. And also, when you come to your indicator, whether you use the RSI or the MACD, which I normally use the MACD, your indicator must also be forming a triangle. So here we were not getting that. So this was, this triangle idea was invalidated. So then one, what, what, what does it become then now? What is it? So you see, when you know patterns, you always have options. So this is what we saw here with this pair. Uh, so this is what I saw. I see that I've got something like this here. This is a pattern on its own. And we've just discussed the patterns now, and you can tell me which one this is, right? So this one does not break the top or the extreme. Also, it just slightly misses the, call it a wave A, just for, ease, uh, for, for understanding. Okay, so this, is, this looks like a contracting flat. And then what do I have here? I've got another pattern here that is doing something like this. It's another sub-correction, I'll call it an X. So what am I expecting here? After a sub-correction, you get another correction, right? So here I'm expecting that I will get something similar here. So this is the reason why on Euro US dollar, I'm not expecting it to be bearish anytime soon. Any move to the downside for me is an opportunity to buy Euro US dollar because I'm not in it, okay? So this is what I'm expecting. You see why I'm expecting this? This could be a zigzag. It does not necessarily have to be a zigzag, but already this shing is so strong and it's already telling, uh, telling me that this could be, it's most likely to be a zigzag. If it forms any other pattern, it's fine, but we know that uh, the bias is to the upside. So here, what we'll be looking for is this correction here. And a break of whatever correction we're gonna get here will be an opportunity for us to buy this pair, okay? 
That's how we look at this market here now. So this is zero years zone. Let me join up these corrections. Let me join up the corrections just to see how this plays out. Right, so you see that this W is representing this whole contracting flat, okay? And then this X is representing this whole pattern here. And then this one here, this yellow, the blue Y, you see the blue Y here, the blue Y is here. So now you see that I've just discussed the lower degree in yellow. This is the higher degree now. Can you see the pattern in the higher degree, red? Now, which pattern is this? This is my top, remember? It is broken here. So already when it breaks the top, it's telling me that it's either going to be an expanding or a running. It cannot be a regular because a regular does not break the top. So I'm only, only left with two options. So this one already breaks the end of, this is possibly, you can call it a way, a way A. So this one is broken. It can be, it's, this already looks like an expanding, the red one, the red, red pattern. It's an expanding pattern. So I know I'm, I'm trading an expanding pattern here and it is not complete. So if it is not complete, I've got an opportunity. I've got an opportunity to trade it. So what am I waiting for here? So I am waiting for this pair to pull back. So let's look into the four hour chart. Let's look into the four hour chart and see how we can trade this. This is the daily chart. Do you see how I'm doing this top down all the way from the weekly chart coming down to the four hour chart. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go into the four hour chart now. This is the four hour chart. So this is how we can trade you Euro US dollar. I'm actually live on the market now uh, because the time now it's uh, 11.48 a.m. South African time. So, sorry, not 11, for, yeah, it's, it's 11.48 a.m. South African time, which is about 9.48 a.m. Uh, GMT. Okay, so this is what we're looking at with this pair here. On the four hour chart, I'm expecting a pullback. I don't know how far it's gonna pull back, but uh, the market will let will tell us. But all I know is that I need a pullback to enter. You cannot buy here. Remember, buy low, sell high, not the other way around. This is where most beginner, young, beginner traders lose money because you see the momentum and you wanna go with it and you find that sometimes you're, getting, you're buying this at a reversal point. Okay, or traders who buy breakouts and you find that you're buying a breakout that is only about to reverse. So what I'm anticipating here is a correction, at least for me to get an entry into this because I did not get it at the bottom. So it's fine, you need patience and wait for these trades. So that will be an X that we're looking for. You can sell this trade, but I do not prefer that because it's too risky, the momentum is too high. You don't know how far this correction is gonna come, right? So this is what you need to do with Euro, wait for it to break this trend line, and then you sell it, okay? Maybe even break this main one here. Once that is broken, that is another confirmation that we're getting the pullback that we, re we, we, we require. So we know the type of pullback we require. We're not looking for these small pullback, small pullbacks, no. We're not looking for the small ones. We want a deeper one so that we can complete the rest of the C all the way to the Y wave, as I've shown you all the way to the blue Y wave. So that is how we're gonna trade Euro, US dollar. For now, if you did not enter and you're a swing trader, if you did not get it here in these areas, uh, rather wait for a deep pullback. You may get it, you may not, okay? So that's how we trade. So now I'm gonna run a bit, a bit fast. You guys know all the patterns now. I'm gonna look at US dollar cat. One of my favorite pairs, uh, we actually made a lot of money on this pair this year. We've been spot on, and this thing has been respecting the Elliott Wave theory almost to the peak. This has been an amazing, amazing, amazing trade. Okay, I'm just gonna load it and show you what the rationale is with this one here. And you see how easy it is trade patterns. I'm going to go to the daily chart. I'm not going to go all the way to the weekly. 
just load the daily chart. Perhaps let's load it up. So just, just look at what I was saying earlier, if you want to understand the Elliott wave theory. Uh, this Elliott's research. So look at this. You get the shape. Obviously, you need a trained eye to be able to spot these things. And you don't just come to a sheet and spot this. I know that this thing, this chart is labeled all the way from the weekly uh, up to the current market price. So I do not just come and uh, get this thing here. I know where the thing comes from, from the higher time frame. Okay. So my hope, my chart is all, uh, where are that? My chart is labeled all the way from the weekly until now. So we, that's why when you get the count, you get it for years ahead, years ahead. So I know in the next year what this uh, pair should be behaving like. Uh, so let's look at this, how this one is behaving or what happened, how we traded this one. Let's see if we're gonna have another trade here. So as always, we always get the seeing here. I'm gonna change the color to identify the patterns. Let's use pink this time. So look at this. You tell me which pattern you see here. This is your top. It was not broken. It breaks the A. Clear running flat. Not running flat, sorry. It's a regular flat. Here, you've got this pattern here. Clear zigzag. Here, you've got another pattern. Clear zigzag. Here you can another pack pattern, but this one, remember, now it's going in the same direction as the shing. This one is going in the same direction as the shing. So I've got one, two, three corrections in combination, and they are divided by sub corrections here. As I said, I use the word sub, uh, the phrase sub correction for lack of a better uh, word, so or for ease of explanation. So what, how do we how do we call this? If you go to your Elliott wave theory, it, it, you you learn that there are uh, corrections that are you can get two corrections in combinations, which are called double trees, or three corrections in combination that are called triple trees. So here you get your one, two, three. It's your classic triple three correction. Yeah, the first correction we label it with a blue W. Second one, the sub is also in blue degree. Third one is a zigzag in blue, green X. And then the Y in, and so then the Z in, which is the third correction. So all these ones, if you can just join them up with the yellow, you can see they give us a clear W, X, Y, X, Z. Elliot only identified in this research that you can a maximum of three, you can have a maximum of three corrections in combination. So we knew that when we got here, there wasn't going to be another correction. Uh, this price had nowhere else to go but all the way down. So now my target for this pair is 1.557. Okay, so I've been shot exactly from the peak, from the blue box. Okay, so how do you trade this now? When, uh, if, you have not, if you have not entered this trade from here or from here or from See from here, this was an opportunity to enter from here. Here, there wasn't really much of an opportunity to enter. You should not be entering, you should not be entering this uh, trade at this stage. It's too risky. So if you are lucky, you can get some sort of a deep correction. So this should not be mistaken as the price going up. It's not going up. If it's going up, we will get indications that it's going up. But anything that looks like a correction or a flag, something like this, we know it's just giving us an opportunity for this to complete all the way there. So that is my target there. I'm already 1,300 pips here. And I'm just relaxed, so I'm letting this trade run. We bought it here, you could, we sent it to the Telegram group way before it happened. We actually started trading this from here. When we identified that we had these three corrections and it was gonna uh, break this and make an, uh, the third correction. We actually traded this correction for about uh, 1,300 pips as well. We traded this swing, we traded this swing. 
we got all these 1,300. We're actually trading this string while we are anticipating that we're gonna go down. So this is how you trade uh, with confidence when you know what the market is doing. This was a classic, 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 classic triple three correction, okay? So while I am on those, this classic curve, to be the corrections. I've got another correction, a big one. Uh, let me do it uh, properly. Look at this one here. So all these combinations of corrections, I can represent it with one big correction, and then I get a big zigzag. What did we say about the zigzag? We said this string must be equals to this one. This is why I'm expecting my target to be around 1.55, about a thousand pips more on top of the 1,300 that I'm already trading here. So this is how this is how you trade with confidence. When you know what you're doing, then you'll be confident and you will not trade uh, with with emotions. So US dollar cat, I do not have a trade here. I don't I don't have a new trade. So just wait for the pullback. I'm just gonna go to the one hour chart and see what you could do there. Just loading up the one hour chart. So the only thing you can do, what you can do is just wait for the pullbacks. You may get this breaking out here. If you do get a breakout here, I don't think it will be an opportunity to buy yet. For me, it's just a correction. You still need to go down. I'm going down all the way unless something changes. So I'm okay. I'm in profit. My profits are locked. Uh, in, so, so I'm not stressed about this one. So I will just wait and watch how this correction plays out. If it goes up as an impulse, then I'm going to start thinking about otherwise, but for now, I'm just letting US dollar cat go down. Okay. Next one. US dollar chief. What are we looking at here? So with this method, the Elliott wave method, it is a forecasting method. You do not just trade, trade trend lines, because if you just trade trend lines, you don't necessarily where, know where the market is going to turn. Right, so I'm gonna to go to the daily chart and show exactly what I showed the last week. And it has actually, this one has actually played up exactly what we anticipated last week. So last week we said this thing is in a big diagonal. I did not discuss the diagonal pattern with you guys. The honors is on yourselves to go and have a look at the diagonals. If you are Elliott Wave traders, you should know what an ending and a leading diagonal is. So here I am looking at a leading diagonal. You know, a leading diagonal, you find it in wave A and wave 5. Okay, so here I've got a, I've got a leading diagonal in wave A. A leading diagonal in wave A, and I've labeled it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go look at the rules of a leading diagonal. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So last week we were here. We were on this string, and we said we're expecting. Remember, the internals of the diagonals, there are three subdivisions, right? So your two will have three, your wave three will have three, your wave four will have three, your wave five will have three as well. Sometimes it breaks there and then it goes down. Right, so we are here, we are on this string, we set, we said we anticipate that US dollar chief must pull back up to wave to form our wave B. So if we look at the four hour chart, we'll see that it actually did that. So if you go look at last week's webinar, you will see that this is exactly what we discussed on US dollar chief. It's exactly what we discussed. We were here and we said. We said we're, gonna, we're expecting this to reverse here and break up and give us a correction and go to B. So it can give us a zigzag or whatever, whatever, whatever swing it is. All right? So this is the trade that we have here. And look how well we actually spot it from the bottom because we've got a forecasting method. 
Okay, so now, yesterday, our last week, we were here and we said this is going to go up and it has gone up a couple of hundred pips. So now we are here and it is forming a flag. So this flag is a continuation pattern. A flag is a continuation pattern. So we know when it breaks, it's going to go up again. So this is what you need to do. Go to the one hour chart. I'm going to go to the one hour chart and see, show you how to trade this if you missed it. So there's actually going to be, and there's actually going to be a nice trade here. Let's look at the one hour chart here. So look at this, how nice this flag is. I'm going to draw it with a trading view drawings, not with a webinar drawings. Let me just clear this up. Like for now, these are, oh, so this is what we're looking at here. So this is a beautiful flag forming there. So if you want to enter this, wait for the break of this flag. Right now it's still in under formation. It does not look ready yet. But what I'll do is I'll draw a horizontal line here. And for those that are, do not have screen time, you can put in an order for this. Uh, you can put in an order somewhere just above the flag and possibly get a, a possible, this, is not, this is not a long term trade, by the way, but it's a nice trade to take. So you can take something like And target somewhere about somewhere about 100, 150 pips on this pair. Okay, so but wait for this flag to complete. You can buy on breakout of this flag. So that is the flag. Uh, that is the trade on uh, US dollar chief. Okay, New Zealand US dollar a very interesting pair. The next one that we're going to look at now. Let's look at something very interesting here on this pair. This pair has been getting a lot of people frustrated of late. So I'm gonna go to the daily chart. Let's see if I can see clearly on the daily chart, otherwise we'll go to the weekly. It's been getting a lot of traders frustrated, including myself, because he did not do what I expected him to do. But now we've got a clear view. All right, so one of the things about the Elliott wave theory is that you must always have an alternative uh, wave count. Okay, because the market is always right. That's what I say. The market is always right. We make mistakes. So when we are wrong, you must admit it and move on and correct. So making a mistake is not the end of the world. Okay, so we do make mistakes sometimes and we did. But let me show you what we were not looking at here. What we couldn't see on this pair. Or some of us, some may have spotted it, may, some may have not. So look at this. This is this the New Zealand US dollar. Look what is happening here. Sometimes you just need to see these things. Okay? Look what this pair always does here. Look what this pair always does every time. Okay? You see what it always does? All right? I'm going to. Let's put in the trend lines there. Actually, I'm not going to put on trend lines. If I put on the line, all those drawings are going to come back. So I want us to see without putting anything on there. Okay, so we always get this. We always get an impulse and then a correction. So the impulse, this is a ending diagonal, and then a correction, and another ending diagonal, and then a correction. Look again what happens here. Same thing happens again. Do you see? So notice something here. I'll draw it bigger with a different color. Notice what happens with this swing. Can you see that this swing now is just repeating what is happening? See this one was a smaller one. A swing and a correction. A swing and a correction. A swing and a correction. But now Everything that is happening in the lower term frame, it's repeated in the big one. Can you see that this is the big one here? It goes shing correction. So what do we expect? We're expecting that this will do exactly what this one that did here. We're expecting this to possibly happen here and trade the fractal. So what I'm expecting is that this can pull back here and then just carry on exactly the same way that 
this swing did. That is what we call trading the fractals. This thing has been repetitive, and if we had noticed this, we would not have expected to sell Euro New Zealand, uh, I mean, sorry, New Zealand US dollar. Because the fractals are there for us to see. If you go to last week's webinar and look at how we traded the uh, pound Aussie or the GBP, GBP uh, Audi pair fractally, you'll see that there's a huge possibility for this to happen. So New Zealand US dollar, we are not looking to sell it. Similar to Euro US dollar, we're looking just for these kind of pullbacks so that we can buy them. So that's what we're looking for. We're not looking to sell. If you're seeing trader, you're not looking to sell this pair. Right, so let's look at the drawings that I've got here. And just show it with the labelings. So first of all, I can already see that I've got an leading diagonal in wave A. I have this leading diagonal in wave A. Leading diagonal at Okay, my mouse keeps going squeaky. A leading diagonal. So we know the rules of a leading diagonals. It's always three subdivisions, right? We possibly have uh, we possibly have three subdivisions and we five as well. So this gives you a textbook one, two, three or five leading diagonals in A and then a B. Look at this B here. It's a nice zigzag. So if we had noticed this, we would not have attempted to, to be selling New Zealand US dollar here. But now it is also clear. If we just take this two, this whole wave A, right? And this whole wave B. The way it's completed. So now we just need to go with the swing. We just need to go with the swing. And you can see this apparent zigzag that will form here. Okay. So now I'm going to clear all this. So now, if you have noticed, so how do we know or how do we change our minds? So you must have a strategy to see how to change your. You must actually have a strategy that gives you certain rules that tells you to take the trade. So here, what most people would expect is if this trend line is broken, then you're going up, right? But you need some kind of a confirmation that this trend line is actually broken and you're going up. So here, this was a confirmation that this was not going down. So most of us thought this was going down, but this was actually going down correctively. And a corrective or a flag pattern, if we go down to the four hour, the one hour chart, let me go to the one hour chart. Actually, if it goes down correctively, we know that it is a flag, and the flag is a continuation pattern. So that was already telling us that this is not going down, this is going up because it's making a continuation pattern. So New Zealand US dollar is going up. So if we do not, most of us did not buy New Zealand US dollar here, or some of us bought and sold here because we thought this is the reversal point, we thought maybe we're gonna get another sub correction for a move down here. So now the only thing you can do is wait for a pullback, same, similar to, similar to Euro US dollar, you need a deeper correction. So if you are lucky and we get this, this is not a selling opportunity, you're getting a buying opportunity. Then we go all the way to the wave uh, to, to the C wave to complete the A B C. So you see, this is the importance of understanding patterns. So I did not discuss the leading diagonals with you, the ending diagonals with you. You can go read that up. So Euro, I mean New Zealand US dollar, you need to wait for a pullback. Okay. Gold, we discussed it in depth in the last webinar. I'm loading up gold now. I think uh, it will be beneficial for you to go and look at uh, last week's webinar where we discussed 
go with thing that I'm gonna go to the four hour chart. So when I'm, I've got the chart, most of the charts I will send in the in the four hour time frame, but it doesn't mean that I did the analysis only on the four hour time frame. My analysis starts all the way to the highest time frame to the lowest time frame. So let's just look at gold quickly, see what is going on here. So what you said about gold last week, we already had this labeling last week. We already had this count last week on gold. So we had we have this bigger W X. Obviously, we expect a bigger Y, right? The market does not move in a straight line. Okay, so under this, so if I just join up W X Y, you can see that there's a, a possible big zigzag here on the on the on the higher degree, but on the lower degree, you can see the red. You can see the red. So the red is also doing the same thing. We're seeing zigzags all over. So here, sub-correction is going in the same direction as the stream. See the lower degree. Okay. So what do I anticipate? I anticipate that I'm going to have another red here. W. It has not happened yet, but because we know how to focus, we trade patterns, WX. This is what we, we anticipate. But then, here, we still get, get another degree lower. Let's look at this one, the green degree. Can you see? The green degree is now the degree just under the red. The degree just under the red. The degree just under the red. Degree just under the red. All over, under the red. So you can go down with these degrees all the way to an infinite time frame, as far as the human eye can see. So we are still on the green. I hope you're following me the green here. So look where we are here with the green. We've got this W in green and this X in green. What do we anticipate? That the green completes. And what does the green complete? It completes the higher W because green is just one degree lower than the W. So this is how we focus. So gold is still uh, on, on its way up. Last week when we analyzed gold, this is what we said. We said, we did the analysis as I've just done now, and we said we are now expecting gold to pull back. This was even before, this was even before this flag formed. If you go look at last week's video, you would hear me saying that wait for a pullback. Actually, it was here. I said, wait for this to form a flag and then buy it. Okay, so I actually bought on this uh, formation of this flag, and I actually thought the green W was going to be here, but then there was another pullback there which is fine because I was already in the trade. So when you actually understand the degrees, then you know where to put in your labeling. So you need a trained eye to be able to spot this. So this is my green. And I'm expecting this uh, green uh, to complete before we get a correction, right? So that's what I'm looking at now. Okay, so that is good. You can only wait for a pullback. So you can see Euro, US dollar, New Zealand, US dollar, US dollar chief is already in a pullback and uh, um, all these pairs, you need to wait for the pullback. So this is why I, I got a lot of uh, newbie traders inboxing me last week saying they're busy blowing accounts because the market is not setting up nice swing trades at the moment, but they are basically just uh, setting up, but the market has not really been moving. It has just been setting up for, for good trades. So, you need to be patient and wait for these pullbacks to enter. Otherwise, you just blow your account. Okay, so which one else can we look at? Uh, Audi US dollar. Okay. Audi US dollar, that's another pair that is exactly similar to what we've just discussed with the, with the other pairs. I'm gonna look at it only on the daily time frame because we're also waiting for the same thing. We're waiting for the pullback. So you need to wait for this pullback. If you've got the skills to trade the pullbacks, then by all means, you can do that. So this one has got a clear. Shing. If you go higher time frame, you'll see the rest of the labeling. A clear shing, and then a labeling A. This one also, we thought it was going to be a triangle. I had it initially labeled as a triangle, but remember what I said about an alternative wave count. So this one is an A, 
and then we put a B a B wave. Right, so this one only gave an A and a B, and then we are now going. The reason why I'm saying that this correction is computed is because it's already out of this out of this channel here. So I can already see that we've got a you can have a W here, and then from that W you can have a sub, and then you can have an X, and then this goes. This is your product. This is the product that you're looking for. And that will be giving you your X wave. Okay. So if you get this, this will be perfect pullback that we're looking for. I've got a blue box here marked, and you can already see that it's respecting the blue box there. It's respecting the blue box. So when we get this pullback and it is actually broken, then that is the opportunity to buy this pair. So right now, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been taking a lot of trades. I'm just waiting for this pullback. So it's important to be patient. Depending on your strategy, I'm not a scalper. I don't day, I don't do day trading. Most of the trades that I take are worth uh, a couple of hundred pips. So if it's a, just a few pips, it does not make me comfortable. So I stick to my strategy. I trade relaxed swing. So what once I get an opportunity, I trade it, set it, and forget it. So right now I do not see anything uh, that is that, that is that is high probable. Um, most of the traders like the US dollar za, so let's look at the US dollar za. We also discussed US dollar za last week and the, and the analysis is still valid. So without all those drawings on, this is what US dollar za is doing. As, if you go look at last week's webinar, I also discussed this one. So you, you've got this thing. So ever since market data was available, US dollar za has only been on the rise until the first, uh, until January of 2016. We South Africans will, will know that what happened on the, uh, around the end of uh, December 2015 when the finance minister, the international member was fired by the president. Uh, the rent sky rocketed to its uh, weakest point. Um, and that was around the 17 rand 50 levels to the dollar at the time. So before then, there has never been a correction on, on the ZAR. But from the from January 2016, uh, US dollar ZAR has been correcting. So this is the correction that I'm seeing here on US dollar ZAR. Look at this. How, how does this look to you? This is a proper zigzag, right? And look at this here. Although not completed here yet, do you not see another zigzag here? Well, I do. I see another zigzag. So I'm expecting another zigzag. Okay. So I'm anticipating that ZA will even go to 11.50. I remember last year, there's a, one of the traders that I was discussing this pair with. It was around 14.15 at the time. And I said, ZA is going to 11.50. And he said, never, not a chance. I do not understand the way you trade. Well, even I, it was hard for me to believe that we will actually see 11.50 when we were around the 15 area uh, with all the political noise that was going on. It was difficult to speak to that bias. But if you are disciplined enough, you need to believe in your strategy. And my strategy was telling me never to buy ZA. Okay, if you're buying, you must just be buying these short-term trades, not, not long-term trades to keep. So that is why from January of 2016, um, after we identify that we're going to get the correction, but look at this one here. We were never, we were never selling US dollar za. We were never selling US dollar za. So we were never buying US dollar za. Okay, my mouse is just behaving a bit. So I've shown you the two zigzags. What is that correction? you're running flat. It does not necessarily break the top, but remember, nothing can be perfect. But for me, that is A. Actually, it does not break the top. So I'll call it a running flat, even if it's not breaking the extreme. All right, so, so that is how I'm trading US dollars are. So here, now, I'm anticipating that this will give us a correction. We are currently in this correction. I'm gonna go to the four hour chart to show you this um, this correction here. I'm anticipating that we're going to make this uh, channel and then once it's broken, 
we're gonna carry on further. I'm still holding my bias of the 1150s area or even less. Okay, so I'm still expecting this trade. So I'm gonna go to the lower time frame. So let, let how do we now label this? So you can this is how we label this. This is your red, right? So we call it the W and the sub X. Another red zigzag Y. See how easy it is. In between, if you go lower, this is your another W X Y. Just do this. Just keep on doing this. Okay. So that is a double three combination: two zigzags and a sub correction. Easy like that. Okay, you need a trained eye to be able to identify this kind of things. So this is the analysis that I've got on US dollar. I'm gonna go lower for hour and just look at the. So we haven't been taking a lot of trades even in our group in the last week. But sometimes having no position is better than having a losing trade. Okay, so what are we looking at here now? So I posted this chat into our group and told my traders, our group members, that to spot this pattern even before it happened. So we at least got a trade with a couple of hundred pips. When this pattern completed here, we actually sold it here at the top and we got this, this trade because we could clearly see that here we had a impulse and we got this running flat does not break the top but breaks the a a b c yeah okay just give me a second okay I'm back on so we actually got this quick trade here last week, even if the market was not friendly last week. So what I am anticipating, it looks like now it's going all, all it's just clear so you can see what's going on. So this is a, a live market now. So it looks like there's a strong momentum to the upside, but I'm not interested in the upside yet on the US, uh, US dollars uh, at the moment, obviously based on my strategy. So I will be trading this if it breaks the bottom of this channel here. Because for me, that looks like a continuation pattern. So I'm gonna wait and see what kind of pattern it forms. Because right now it is not clear. So when it is not clear, you don't just trade, okay? So US dollars are, although the bias is to the downside, let's wait and see what it does, okay? Which one can we do now? Audi, New Zealand. My favorite pair. Okay, we've got the clearest, we've got the clearest setup on this pair. Wow. It's not usually a good thing to say a clearest or a short trade because, in my experience, the trades that I have lost were those that I thought were so short. Okay, so. I guess there's no such thing as a short trade. Eh? We always have to use risk management in case we are wrong because most of the time, some of the times, we are not so right. The market is always right. We make mistakes. So once you understand and acknowledge that, then you will trade with proper risk management. You will not expose, expose your account. You will not lose a lot of money. Okay, so here, now, what we have here, as much as we've got the swing, we've leveled the swing one, two, three, four, five. So if you understand your theory, you will understand when to level one, two, three, four, five, and when to level double X, Y, when to level A, B, C. You know, there's a difference. There are rules and guidelines for that. So here we've got a clear one, two, three, four, five textbook stuff that complies to all the rules of a one, two, three, four, five. And then I've got an A, and then I've got a B correction and this B correction has got okay so you must just uh, understand the degree that it is in as well so this B correction has got two two within it 
So this is what I'm anticipating. We already made this one. So I'm anticipating that this will go down. And in between, I've got what my sub connection here, which is the X. And what am I anticipating? If I go down here, help, I'm going to be buying all the way up for many, many pips, over 1,500 pips of this one. So this pair dare not come down here because I'm going to make a lot of money on it. We've got the clearest setup here. Just look at this one, two, three, four, five. And then we've got an A with a B. And then the B is always in three waves. So let me show you that this is in three waves. It's in three waves. Just look at the three waves that I'm talking about. One, two, three. It complies to the waves. It's a three wave, but it's in combination. So that's why I say you need to get a train R. You need to get the basic principles so, so that you can be able to spot these things. So see how clear this one. If I get this one, I'm going to be buying for this one for a long, long time. Unless I get a W, X, Y, X, Z. But I do not see that I will get an X, Z because that would mean breaking. You could, you could get it to break number, uh, the, the, the extreme of five and then go up. But otherwise, if we get here, this is the trade that I am waiting for right now. Okay. But while we're waiting, while we're waiting, do you see how clear this is? While we're waiting, doesn't mean that we shouldn't trade. So I'm going to go down to the daily and show you how we're going to trade this. Just remember, I'm going to be looking at the X and the Y here. Just on the four hour now to look for this. This is where I want to buy this pair. So the only thing that we want is for it to break this W. If it sometimes it can just break the W and then go all the way up, or or complete or complete this zigzag. But if it does get around these areas. I am going to make so much money. You're going to make so much money. So do not miss this trade. Do not miss this trade. So much money to be made there. But while we're waiting for this trade, we cannot wait while we, I mean, if you're a trader, you must, you must be trading. If your job is to trade, if you're if trading is your job, then it means your job is making money. So we can't wait for trades for weeks. While we're waiting for weeks, we, all, we must, we must get other opportunities. So this is the daily chart. I'm going to, Go to the four hour and see what opportunity there is here. And I'll show you what I'm looking at on the four hour chart. All right, so my blue arrows, when I send my chart, I'll show me the forecast, what I expect the pair to do. So here, I've got this impulse. After the impulse, I've got this correction. So you see, if I've got this correction, this must correction must complete. Right? So if we complete and I get this correction, maybe it breaks this top here. It has already broken the bottom, so it can be an expanding one or a running one, doesn't matter. But if you get around this area where this pattern completes, then I know that we're gonna be getting this trade. So you see we're getting a couple of hundred peeps as well here while we are waiting for the big one. So Audi New Zealand is my favorite pair. I've made a lot of money on this pair alone. So that's what I'm anticipating. That is my view on Audi New Zealand. Very nice setup. So we expect this small pattern here to complete. Maybe come break the top here. If it breaks this top, I'll be selling. I'll post it to the premium group for the guys who are subscribed to my setups. We'll be selling when it breaks this top. All the way down here. And when we come down here, we're going to be making money. Well, it may come down there or not, but uh, if it does, then we make money. Okay. All right, so I don't know how much time I've ran so far. But I think there is time for one or two more chats. Okay, I'm going to look at two more chats and then uh, we call it a day. Um, okay, let's look at how do you get. You see all these charts on my watch list. I've got I've got an analysis for each and every one of them. 
Okay, so now let's look at this one, how they can't. Okay, so I'll be sending out videos to the premium group for, for specific chart analysis, just the videos focusing on specific trades so that you can and have an understanding of how, how, how we look at this chart. So if you remember USD CAD, we traded a WXY. Let me remove all this. If you remember how the can we tell it a WXY. Let me show you here. We've got a shield. Change the color for the corrections. The corrections, I'm going to label them red. Right. That's how we're looking at these ones. that all these labels you're gonna get the labels off surely clearly okay so let's do this quickly again so we've got the string as always you must always have a string right so this is my string here this is my string and I'm gonna label all the corrections in red Expanding flat, zigzag, or the zigzag. So we don't know which one is forming here. Possibly going to do something like this. So in between here, we always have these ones. This one should have been a yellow. Mm -hmm. So we've got one, we've got two, and this is the third one. How do we label W, X, Y, X, Z? And then after Z, we anticipate that this will go all the way up. Okay? So do you see how I've identified these patterns? I've got a expanding flat, I've got a zigzag, which is a sub, I've got this Y, which is a zigzag, I've got uh, a zigzag, which is a sub correction X, and then I've got the last one, I'm anticipating that we're gonna go down here with a, with a Z, but notice, notice this. I've got one big zigzag. You see how easy it is to focus? if you've got a trained eye. So what are we anticipating? If this is here, the bucket is currently here. So we still have this leg to go down to complete the Z, right? So that's what we anticipate with the Audi cat. We want to complete this leg before we get the big one up. The same, similar to what we got on uh, US dollar, US dollar cat, all right? We completed the W, X, Y, X, Z, and after Z, there's no other correction. It must go, it must carry on, it must, it must continue with the trend. So this, once it's broken, and then it goes. But we know how to trade, take it from the top of the sea. So if we get here on Audi CAD, so I'm waiting. And while we're waiting, we must we also, we should be getting other trades, right? But we're waiting to complete this string so that we can get this one up. So this is how you trade the Elliott Wave Theory. So it's not about what I see people doing. Some, most of people, even experienced traders just, Labeling everything one, two, three, four, five. A lot of people interpret that guideline differently, but this is how I interpret the Elliott wave theory, and it has worked wonders. Okay, in any case, the, the theory was developed in the 1930s. These days, we've got robots, we've got high frequency trading machines, so 
it will not exactly be the same. And also the, the wave theory was mostly developed using stock market data, not child currency data. So you must apply some discretion. There are some adjustment that needs to be made, okay? So do not, you must ask yourself questions and then you must uh, use your own discretion. And once you have the experience and once you've seen a couple of patterns in their behavior, you will know how to trade this. So remember now, we're still on Audi CAD. We're still expecting the completion of this year. Okay. So what could possibly happen here is that you could get a pullback. This is how you can trade this. This is the daily chart. So now look at this one. If this swing or this flag looking pattern here is broken to the downside, then we'll be selling. So you can see here. So let's look at this here. If this is broken to the downside, look for sales. Mark your charts accordingly. Look for sales will be completing the Z and then we will get an indication of exactly where the turning point on the Z is going to be and then we're going to get mark our blue box accordingly. Okay, I'm going to go to the four hour chart just to get a zoom into this area where we want to sell it. Uh, some traders will already be saying a double top and it's making a lower low and that's telling them that this should be a sell. All right, so that's what we have. We've got a big flag here. Got a big flag, that's how we put it on here. So you see when I put in trend lines, I'm not just putting in trend lines because that's the easy thing to do. I'm putting in trend lines because I'm identifying patterns. So now what I'm anticipating here is a move to the downside still. And that is supported by the fact that oil also, I'm expecting oil to be strong and when oil is strong, and oil is strong, it means the CAD is going to be strong. And the CAD is strong on Audi CAD, you know the, the quoted pair, the quoted pair, which is always the second pair. When this one is strong, obviously this will go down, right? So this is the quoted pair, and this goes along with oil. So I'm expecting this to break here. I'll be expecting a break and maybe a formation. Some call it a retrest. But for me, it's just a Flag, which is a continuation pattern, and then we're going to sell to complete the Z. Okay, so we, we've got a, a trade here. Okay, right. I think we've discussed uh, so many pairs. There's so much to discuss. It's just uh, I cannot go through all the charts in one go. But let me just look at oil as the last one. Oil as the last one. Okay, let's clear everything. I don't even know how much I've ran so far. I think I've ran over time. I don't want to, I want it to run more than, more than an hour, but I think uh, 15 minutes more will be okay. So oil looking at the higher time frame. Looking at the higher time frame on oil. Let's look at it. It's been a lonely video without the participants in the, in the webinar yet. Talking to myself is not so nice. Obviously, that's because we could not have this webinar last night because of my internet connections. Connection. All right, so look at this one on the daily. What we expect. So when you have the labeling, this is why I say once you've got the forecast, you know the direction for the next couple of months. Yes. So you're always gonna have trade. There is not one day where you're not gonna have trade. So oil, we've got a clear wave one, two, three, and we have got a four here that is forming. We're expecting that after the four, obviously we must get a wave five. After wave five, we get a wave A, B, C, right? But do you see how many years is it gonna take for us to, to, to get this correction completed here? So we already have one, two, three, Four, five, and we know when this is completed, this must go down. This, this is this is why forecasting is so nice. You're always gonna have trades, okay? So now where are we? We are here. We are on the WX. So we are anticipating that that WX will complete, and then when it is complete, then we're gonna go for a Y. So which means what are we looking for with the on oil? We are looking for this channel 
to be broken to the upside. So this is how you're going to trade oil. You see there's already broken out of the channel. So what you do is wait for a correction or a retest. It can even, this correction can even be here along the trend line. But as long as it corrects, when it breaks, you take the trade all the way up. So we're expecting strong oil. So you remember, you remember, excuse, excuse me, you remember what I said about Audi CAD, USD CAD, they're all going down because CAD is strong. So this oil is also confirming the same thing. It's confirming that we're gonna be, we're gonna have strong oil, we're gonna have strong CAD. So all the CAD pairs, if, if CAD is the quoted pair, that pair is going down. If CAD is the base pair, uh, that, that, that pair is going up. So example where of, a, of a pair where, where CAD is, uh, is, the, is the base pair, is CAD CHF. I'm not gonna go through CAD CHF, I'm just showing you how you're gonna trade oil. So CAD is the base pair here, so we're expecting CAD CHF, even though I didn't do analysis. I'm sure my, if I do an analysis on this one, I've actually just taken profit on this pair. So I'm expecting that CAD CHF will be going up. Anything, you see here, this is the trade that we, we took, it, is, it has just hit profit. We took this trade in the blue box in April. It just hit profit. I'll be posting this trade onto the premium group to show how we traded it. I'm not gonna go through it now. One of our traders, uh, Manda, actually identified this during our training in Pretoria in April. And you can see that this trade is only hitting target today. And it has hit it for a number of pips. Let's just see how many pips this is here. I'm sure when I check my account, this would have been close because this has hit the target exactly. All right, um, so this is 658 pips. Okay, how long did it take? We just check the length. How long it took us to do tell how long this trade took? We took it here. It took us 85 days. Obviously, this is including weekend. 85 days, 650 pips. Okay. Nice trade, very nice trade. All right, thank you guys. If there's any other pairs, uh, we'll discuss them at the later stage, uh, possibly next week. I hope you enjoyed the webinar and you learned something. Um, we've got a course uh, this weekend, 5, 6 August in Pretoria. If you're interested, uh, send me an inbox on Telegram. My name is, uh, let me just type it here. You just type here. You can follow me on uh, Facebook. My name is Ndibu Wo, Victor Manena. If you type just Victor Manena, you should be able to find me. Okay, I'm trying to text my name. Okay, but I'll, I'll just I'll just write it. I'll just write it. It's Ndibu Wo like this. Okay, that's where you will find me on Facebook. And the rest is Victor. Victor Manena. This way you find me on Facebook. Okay, and the number for international and the local you use plus twenty seven eight two seven nine six six three, two, four. Call me or send me a telegram text or a WhatsApp text or to inquire about the courses. We're gonna be having one this weekend. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Bye-bye.